Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Stefano, your Chief Experience Officer. What is a Chief Experience Officer? It's the guy that takes care of you when you sign up for a Jeep Venture Store. And today I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of what it's like to be on a Jeep Venture Store going around a beautiful orientation walk. I've been doing this job for three years now, I've run so many tours, about like 60 tours, um, all over Western Europe, mostly Italy, which is my home country. I'm from a little town called Frosinone which is when I was out of Rome, there is nothing to do there. But if you ever stop by, let me know, we're gonna get coffee together. It is unfortunate times where we cannot travel. That doesn't mean that we cannot stay connected and that we cannot keep dreaming about our next destination. So today I'm taking advantage of these times to show you a little bit of my home country, starting with one of the most beautiful cities in the world, which is Florence, Firenze. This is how you say it in Italian. So what are we gonna do? We're going to see a market, we're going to see some historical landmarks, we're going to learn about some food you can try here, learn about some very, very local experiences, because here at Ventures we're all about local experiences, and we're going to learn a little bit about Florence. So hopefully you will get this in your mind and you will want to get there as soon as everything will be over, okay? So let's start. We are in Via Faenza. This is our beautiful little hotel, Nuova Italia. Lots of steps in this hotel. It's a good thing that we're not there right now and that we're doing this virtually. Beautiful locally owned business because that's what we like to do. We like to keep the money in the country. We like to support local businesses. So amazing hotel. You will be treated like family next to a beautiful little bar where you can get your espresso every morning. Okay, this is a beautiful market. As you can see, all around here, all around this building that we have in front of us, you actually have stalls everywhere. You can wander around, you can negotiate. Please learn how to negotiate, I'll explain it to you. And you can get nice souvenirs in here. Mostly they sell leather, but if you want to buy a real Florentine leather, just stay tuned because I will tell you a few places, one place actually, where you can get the real uh, letter from Florence. They've been making letter in Florence for such a long time and it's one of the city's excellences. But you can just wander around this market and find your souvenir to bring home. Okay, so this is the entrance of the Mercato Centrale. The most amazing thing about this market is that it's two floors. The first floor, the one that we're looking at right now, is the traditional way. You can find all the Florentine um, local ingredients and things that Florence is known about. Um, let's say all of the meats or the salami, the cheeses, homemade pasta, there is so much to explore and to taste in the city. In the second floor, you have more of a modern market. So it's a very fun formula. You can go there and eat whatever food you want. Me personally, as a CEO, I prefer to go on the first floor. It's more authentic, more local, cheaper. And you can get like a beautiful panino with lampredotto. What is a panino with lampredotto? I didn't know that the cow had so many different stomach sections. Well, apparently the third stomach, uh, the first section of the stomach of the cow is the one that is being used to make this panino con lampedotto. It's boiled with a bunch of spices and put in this sandwich and this bread loaf. It goes extremely well with a glass of Chianti wine and it's an amazing experience. You can get it here on the first floor of the market, but you can also get it in one of the many, many kiosks that are all around Florence. It's the most perfect street food experience that you can have in Florence, and it's only for real Florentine people. Right here, we have one of the kiosks that I've been talking about. This kiosk is owned by a very fun, friendly lady. This lady, every time we pass by it, she wants to talk to us. She wants to make us try the panino with Lampredotto. Once again, one of these kiosks or in a market, you're going to have the most local Florentine experience by eating something that might be weird, but we like weird because we embrace the bizarre. All right, over here we are right in front of the Cappelle Medice. Medice. Does it sound similar, Medici, Medici, Medici family. Medici family is the family that made Florence what it is today. By the way, it's not Florence, but it's Firenze, okay? The symbol of the Medici family is that one symbol that you see on top of the door. Keep in mind, these um, Medici chapels, which is where the Medici were buried back in the days, 
1966 was completely flooded. So the water would get all the way up to the door and basically it was a big tragic moment for Florence because lots of the art got threatened by this flood in 1966. What happened though is that when the people went to clean up the Cappelle Medici, they found underneath the ground floor um, a little secret room where the flood actually started to show some signs behind the wall. What are the signs? They went there, they saw that there were graffiti. Guess who this graffiti belonged to? Michelangelo, yeah, that's right, because Michelangelo, there was a moment where he wasn't in a great situation with the Medici family, so he was hosted in the Cappelle Medici, hiding in the Cappelle Medici, he was there for 30 days. He didn't know what to do, so he started to make sketches on the wall, graffiti on the wall. No Netflix at the time, so you had to find a way to do this. And so, right now you cannot visit it, but we got rumors that it might open soon. You might be able to see Michelangelo graffiti, which is incredible. The graffiti are about the Sistine Chapel and also the Sacristia Nuova, which is a sculpture that Michelangelo put inside of the Cappelle Medici because he was the one in charge of this beautiful project. Okay, let's move on. Can you tell me what this little window is? Like all these people walking around, they're not even noticing. What is this little window? What do you think it is? I'll tell you in a second. What is the most famous drink in Florence? Alcoholic, obviously. Wine, this is a wine window. I know it's crazy, but what happened was that back in the days, there was a moment where Florence, Firenze, wasn't doing really good economically wise. The Medici family decided to allow families to sell their own wine. So they allowed them to build little windows inside of their buildings that would open up in storage rooms where they would sell wine. And they would also put some food for people that were less fortunate in there. So you could knock knock on this little window and a hand would come out with a flask of Chianti wine. You can buy the wine in here and grab your wine to bring it home. Because back in the days and forever, in Italy, wine has never been something for wealthy people. It's something that everybody should have a right to have, okay? So Wine Window is actually one bar in one neighborhood in Florence that recreated this Wine Window, basically opened a Wine Window and started to sell drinks through it. Okay, so this is such an incredible moment. This is the Duomo Florence. You see that brick dome? That is the biggest one in the world. You see the ball on top of the brick dome? That ball was struck by lightning so many times. Um, actually, there is still a sign on the other side of the dome on the floor, there is a white sign. And that white sign indicates when the ball actually fell to the roof and went all the way down. And actually these signs were always taken as divine signs. Like God telling the Florentine people that the Medici had to be kicked out from the city or that uh, God wasn't happy with uh, the people and how they were behaving. Anyways, long story short, this is a masterpiece of the city of Florence. You get to see this dome from everywhere. It's so beautiful. And Brunelleschi, the engineer and the architect that built this dome, is the one that came up with this idea more than a hundred years after the church was built. Because for so long, people didn't know how to build such a big brick dome. It is so incredible. It was the most insane um, engineering work that you could possibly do back in the days. And that's why Brunelleschi is seen nowadays one of the most famous figures of the Florentine Renaissance, okay? Wow, what is this? This is Piazza della Signoria. How enchanting this square is. Do you want to know a fun fact about Piazza della Signoria? Piazza della Signoria, here on the floor where you see it, it's covered, but underneath there is an archaeological uh, area, a Roman archaeological area. Yes, you heard well, because why? Florence is a, is a Roman city. In fact, the real um, origin of the name Florence, Firenze, is Florencia. Florencia, okay? Um, flourishing. This is the meaning of Firenze, which goes extremely well with Renaissance. So underneath here, you have a, a Roman city, okay? While this beautiful palace over here, it's Palazzo Vecchio. Palazzo Vecchio has been for a very long time where the Medici family have been ruled the city from. And even the mayor of Florence right now, he rules the city from Palazzo Vecchio. Palazzo Vecchio has so many secret rooms 
Um, why? Because the Medici family used to be a very interesting family, like alchemists, scientists. Uh, they were into very interesting stuff. And this palace is basically the representation of how genius they were, but also how crazy they were at the same time. Keep in mind, this is the Loggia de Lanzi. There are some um, original statues from the 15th century that are still in there, okay? Michelangelo actually wanted the whole square to look exactly like that. Let me show you one thing though. So, you see, over here, this beautiful building, this is the Uffizi museum one of the most important museums in the world it's a must see but i won't tell you much because everybody knows that we have to visit the uffizi and all of the beautiful renaissance art that is in there but if you look here on the left you actually can see this little stone over here if you get closer that is a portrait made by who by Michelangelo. I know, it's crazy, but this is Florence and crazy things happen. Apparently there was someone that used to make fun of Michelangelo every time he used to pass around uh, this uh, little street. So he decided to sculpt his face in the stone of Palazzo Vecchio so it could be made fun of forever. Okay, so when we do the orientation while we pass by here, we get to see this person's scalp in the stone of Palazzo Vecchio by Michelangelo. There is a real Michelangelo that is right there. Everybody can see it, everybody can touch it. This is Florence. All right, Antico Vinaio, this is the food moment, the food moment you were waiting for. You have to keep in mind that in Florence you had some of the most incredible salami and the most incredible cheeses and the most incredible wines. In this place, Alantico Vinaio, which has so many different um, location in the same street. It's basically a whole street of street food. What you can do, you get inside of here, they have this massive schiacciata, which is just like a long white pizza. They cut it in the middle and they make the most crazy uh, combination of salami, cheeses, uh, vegetables all together. The result is this incredible sandwich because around four euros and 50, five euros, six euros, a nice glass of wine you're going to have one of the most typical Florentine thing and something that you will never forget, trust me, okay? This whole street is actually full of similar places where you can get a similar experience. But anyways, I want to, I want to introduce you to one of the most possibly typical things that you can do in Florence, very local thing. This place is called La Prosciutteria. My recommendation, go in here and get one of these massive tagliere. Tagliere, what is tagliere? Tagliere is a wooden plate. On top of that, you're going to find all sort of salami and all sort of cheeses. Keep in mind, one very important cheese, very tasteful cheese that you need to try in Florence, pecorino, sheep cheese. Especially the one from Pienza is super, super famous, super flavorful, and they have so many different ways to storage it, to store it and to age it. It's amazing, prosciutto, salami, all those things. My recommendation, cinta senese. Cinta senese is a bread, uh, a bread of, of pig. Cinta senese is a bread of pig that all is present here in Tuscany. This pig has a white um, belly that goes around his shoulder. Um, he's a very picky pig, he only eats something uh, delicious stuff and so his meat is so tender, so delicious. So when you get salami of cinta senese with all of the cheeses and with a good glass of Tuscan wine, which could be Chianti from Cianciovese grape, it could be Brunello Montalcino, could be Bulgari, could be Montepulciano. This is wine region, there is so much good wine that you can try. When you get this together with cheese, salami and wine in this little place over here, you will have the most authentic Florentine experience ever. So you need to try it. Oops. I didn't talk about gelato. How crazy is that? Gelateria de Neri on the same street. Think about how crazy the street is. It has one of the best gelato in town. They might not have Chianti Sorbet. If you want Chianti Sorbet, I'll tell you a little tip whenever you come on my tour. But they have incredible, incredible gelato. And last but not least, stop on Piazza Santa Croce. A couple of things about the square. It's 
just incredible. It's one of the most loved churches in all Florence. This church inside you have some of the most important people that are buried in here, like Dante Alighieri, the guy that wrote the Divine Comedy with the Inferno, or Galileo Galilei is buried in here, okay? Um, another incredible thing about the square is that right behind of this beautiful church is a leather school, a leather school that's been going on for centuries now. You can get in there and you can actually see how leather is done and how they've been working on uh, how to work on leather. It's the most amazing leather school that you can find here in Florence and a great place to get fine leather um, clothing or fine leather souvenirs, okay? One last thing is historical Florentine soccer. Every time, every year in this square, they put together like all sort of benches and everything. They recreate a soccer field. Four neighborhoods that are in Florence, there's four neighborhoods battle against each other in the historical Florentine soccer. The historical Florentine soccer has been going on since the 16th century, and it's a sport that puts together rugby, wrestling, and soccer. So you look at it and it looks like people are just fighting. But there is a ball in the meantime and it's floating around and you need to throw it on the other side of the pitch, okay? This happens every single year in here. Not a lot of tourists know about this, but this is one of the most important and the most amazing traditions of Florence. Um, it's a really amazing place, the one that we're standing in front of right now. Soccer with Florentine style, Florentine style, ladder, a beautiful Santa Croce church with all of the most important geniuses were buried. Guys, that's it for today. I hope to see you in Florence soon. Thank you so much for joining with this amazing orientation walk around Florence. I cannot wait to share it with you once we can go back traveling again together. Thank you so much. Grazie mille. Ciao, ciao.